Hey, I'm Nathaniel and welcome to the webinar Advanced Lead Generation Strategies. I'm going to be focusing on the online aspects of, of lead generation for the webinar and uh, I want to talk specifically about social media. Uh, social media is really an area where a lot of attention is at the moment and there's a lot of confusion as to how to capture that attention and generate a return on investment uh, with that attention. And uh, yeah, I'm going to cover all of the aspects of that. Just for those of you that are on the call that haven't come across uh, any of my talks or training material or online assets out there, uh, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I started um, uh, Bibi Consulting Group, which is the focus of my um, day to day at the moment. Uh, about five, six years ago now, I'm a marketer, a LinkedIn trainer specifically, and a, as keynote speaker at regular events and so on. In fact, I was at Singapore like a couple of weeks ago and I had a talk about social media marketing at the Digimark on Asia Pacific conference and and somebody said to me, like um, I remember someone saying, hey Nathaniel, I'm spending 75,000 US dollars per day on Google advertising. And he said, uh, we used to get about 200 uh, inquiries a day from that. And now we're only getting 120. And so that was quite a common thread with a lot of the questions that were coming up. Like a lot of people are finding that um, what was working a couple of years ago, all of a sudden it's become more competitive, which means it's become more expensive because more people competing for that space, if that makes sense. Now, when I started my career, I wasn't doing LinkedIn marketing and I wasn't doing social media marketing. In fact, what they weren't even around. Uh, I started my career in Phuket, Thailand, uh, selling property to foreigners, and it's very seasonal. Uh, we were selling holiday villas, so there's only people on the island wanting to buy property four months of the year. And I started during low season, and it was raining outside, and I was thinking, how do I get some customers? And they, uh, the development company I was working for had one sale within the past six months prior. And so I actually just forced myself to learn about search engine optimization, and I could get that uh, website to the top of Google, we we're getting 10 leads a day at one point and we were very successful over the, um, selling uh, property developments in Phuket. I got recruited by a company in Hong Kong, funnily enough, and literally like while I was on the plane over to Hong Kong, Google did the unthinkable and updated its algorithm and all of a sudden what I was doing um, not only wouldn't work anymore but it could get you blacklisted off of Google, so I was forced to adapt. So I learned about Google advertising and at the time I could for one or two dollars a click get the same sort of traffic that I was getting 20, you're paying 20, 30 dollars for now and I'm right at the top of Google. Um, so, you know, got an outcome there. AdWords is still successful. I still use it today. However, it is more expensive and where attention shifting quicker is social media and the big companies haven't caught on yet. Last year in America alone, 95% of the Fortune 500 companies lost market share and the reason being is they need so much data and evidence to be able to shift their marketing budgets over to where the attention is at the moment. So while they're losing market share, there are smaller businesses and startups that are growing their companies rapidly uh, through using uh, technology and the changes that are going on in the world. You only have to look at all of the um, people that are making themselves billionaires under the age of 30, uh, Snapchat entrepreneurs, Mark Zuckerberg, you've got the CEO of Uber, and it's happening across industries as they get disrupted, and it's no different in your industry. If you think your industry won't get disrupted, I hate to say it, but uh, you're wrong. Every industry will get disrupted over the next 30 years. Uh, we're about uh, 17 years uh, into a 50-year historical event, which will be looked uh, back upon as I think it's going to be called the digital revolution because it's very similar to a revolution. You know, th things are going to be changing so much moving forward that um, uh, if you don't have the ability and the culture within your organization to change, you get, it's going to be a very stressful time for you to be in business. Uh, these are some of the points that uh, we've promised that we'll cover. So this should just give you an idea of like what you can expect. Uh, we're going to position you as a thought leader. All of the things I'm going to share with you are going to be easy to implement. I want to deliver as much value. That's my mission is to really just deliver as much value as so you run away from here, grow your businesses and tell people how you did it. And, uh, you know, this, this is my philosophy on business. You just add value wherever you go. And uh, it just it seems to come back in all sorts of ways, you know, not that I'm measuring it, but uh, I've got a big add value philosophy that I um, that goes behind all of this. So I hope you enjoy the content. And I really uh, uh, would love to get your feedback so that we can improve it moving forward. Um, viral content, obviously. Cold calling is dead, new lead generation methods, four step process to get your LinkedIn profile ranking number one. This is just something I threw in there because like you can literally do 15 minutes of work on your LinkedIn profile and it'll show up at the top of the search results and I thought it'd be a pretty cool little, you know, just party trick, I guess, um, for you to implement that and be able to, to uh, rank one for um, when people are searching for you. Confession time, right? I'm scared of heights. I am. I always have been and 
I did a Tony Robbins event in the Gold Coast a few years ago, and he said, there's only one thing that trumps fear, it's massive action. And I decided that the following morning, what I would do is I'd go skydiving. So there I am, uh, jumping out of the plane. You may notice there's a chap on my back, doesn't look as scared as I do. He's done over a thousand jumps. He knew exactly what height to pull the chute. Um, so he was in full control. He like, my hands are only out there doing the peace sign because he tapped me on the shoulder when he told me it was okay for me to open my hands at that point. And so my point is like I landed safely and I had a great experience, even though like I was shit scared. I had no idea what I was doing. I literally jumped out of an airplane with no idea how we were going to land or anything because um, I trusted him. Right. And uh, I think that a lot of us are diving into our social media marketing uh, without it, without somebody overseeing who knows what uh, they're doing. Uh, let alone without even a plan like we're lit pretty much doing the equivalent of jumping out of the plane without even a backpack on our back Not knowing, uh, you know what to measure What, what, what height we're aiming for to, to pull the chute and you know what general direction we want to land We're just literally flying blind and We've all heard this a thousand times You've now heard it a thousand and one, but if you fail to plan then you plan to fail It's this is the key guys. You really need to have a plan because otherwise uh, not only are you don't have a roadmap that, that to get where you want to go, but you're also just like taking up so much mental capacity thinking on a day to day basis of uh, the direction you're heading, your purpose, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so the number one trend in digital marketing right now. Okay, this is a hot topic. I get asked this all the time at events. Uh, video marketing is massive. Social media marketing is massive. Content marketing is massive. Chat bots. Things like um, those live stories and you know uh, Facebook Live, sorry, and and the stories on Instagram and, and Snapchat. Uh, look, the, I think that um, a lot of people get bogged down in the different platforms and play the platform dance to capture attention because you have to do it different ways in different platforms. But what I think the number one trend is that people need to look out for is fear. I think that fear is on the rise online and I think if businesses don't uh, anticipate that it's going to become a massive, massive factor, then they're going to lose the competitive edge. Now, let's, let me ask you this. Why are we on social media? Why did we start up a Facebook account? Well, yes, we did see our friends doing it and we wanted to follow the crowd like most of us do in the real world. But um, isn't it true that when you're dealing with a business, that if you look at their website and there's recommendations or testimonials on there, there's a good chance they could have copied and pasted them from anywhere, right? Whereas if you look at somebody's LinkedIn profile and there's recommendations on there, it's a bit different, isn't it? Somebody actually has to go log into their LinkedIn profile, submit the recommendation. And so what's the outcome? Well, there's two things at play. First of all, they're trustworthy. They're believable when you look at them. So you can see why, like if I was employing somebody to manage my, you know, give me financial advice, for example, I'd probably learn more from looking at the recommendations on his LinkedIn profile than I would from his website. And the other thing is, because it's a little bit harder to do and you've got to get genuine recommendations, guess what? There's not as many people doing it. Therefore, for you to stand out from the crowd, you don't have to do much work. I did a talk to 150 executives at Westpac and they're all under the age of 30 and asked them to put their hand up if they had one recommendation on the LinkedIn profile. They're all under the age of 30, you know, like tech savvy guys. And I only had like three hands go up. So how easy is it to stand out from a crowd and 150 guys, um, you know, all executives at Westpac? You just have to have more than one recommendation on your LinkedIn profile. Uh, there was a protest. It must, I can't remember what it was again. I think it was a climate change protest. And there was 400 people that made their way down to Bondi Beach and actually stuck their head in their sand. I thought it was hilarious. But it also does actually remind me of what a lot of business owners and marketers are doing you know, in 2017, because not, they're not doing it with um, in regards to climate change. They're doing it in, in regards to digital disruption and they're trying to put their head in the sand uh, to because they don't understand it. You know, it scares them on there. Um, personal computers haven't grown very much in recent years. This I don't know, in 2011, this hasn't been updated. Uh, smartphones have taken over like 95% of the activity on Facebook is on a mobile device. So, so if any of you follow me online, you'll notice that in the media, I raised a bit of controversy recently when I said the websites are likely to be extinct within the next five years. Uh, I don't have to explain this slide. You all know what the new normal looks like. Uh, under, uh, half the population is under the age of 30 and they haven't even licked a, a, um, a postage stamp yet. Like they're literally lives have been like digital since day dot. So w you tell me, do you think like all of a sudden the world's going to change and they will go back to sending snail mail and like looking at billboards and actually watching the ads between TV, um, TV shows?
<clears throat> exactly. I was actually went as a guest to Channel 10 Studios to watch the Project Live uh, TV show in Australia um, the, with my sister and a few of our friends. And funnily enough, like they had a YouTube uh, marketer or sorry, YouTube um, a, a girl that had a YouTube show. I can't remember her name now, but uh, it's funny. Some of the organisers during the break were going, "How do you become a YouTube star?" You know, and it wasn't that long ago where like YouTube stars would be like, how do I become a TV star? These days, people would more, more would like prefer and get more um, fame and success if they're on like YouTube than they would on a TV. Isn't that crazy? Facebook just introduced a, um, a TV network in America, which I won't go into, but you know, like big things are going to happen to that industry. Uh, average attention span of a goldfish is about eight seconds. Ours is now between four and six seconds. Um, so uh, things like, you know, the headlines and just stuff like that, capturing people's attention <clears throat> is pretty much the gold. Like it's so crucial. If, if you don't do that right, then uh, you're actually going to you have the best content in the world. It doesn't matter. Cold calling is dead. Well, yeah, I guess it is. Like, I mean, I like lukewarm calling. I, I find their details on LinkedIn, send them a few touch points here and there. Then call them. I think the phone's important. Don't get me wrong. But when you outsource to a telemarketing company, you're actually getting success 1% of the time. That's the statistic. And when I say success, I mean, they're actually reaching the key decision maker and being able to set an appointment for the for the, for you as, as the client of theirs 1% uh, of the time. So they're not able to do it in like less than 20 hours or 10 hours or however long it takes to, to make the amount of phone calls. So, you know, the, the days of like interrupting people during their day or interrupting your customers and interrupting them again and again and again to get a result, they're over. OK, they may not be over just yet, but they're on their way out. And so f as far as your thinking should be concerned, is that's out of the picture. If you want to be around in five years, that, then cold calling has to be completely out of your con context of your brain. And I think that um, warm calling is different, like where you've found a touch point on social media, you've connected with them first, you've asked them for the phone number and then you call them. That's not a cold call in my mind. You know, so start time to start thinking a little bit different now that we have so much information at our fingertips. The other thing is when you approach someone on social media, you don't have to tell people why, like when you cold call, and I've done a lot of it, uh, you have to explain who you are and why you're calling. You don't need to do that on social media. You don't have to do that because they can click on your name and read your, your profile. And it's a big significant difference because if they're clicking on your name and reading your profile, they've asked for the information. Whereas if you're just like interrupting their day and telling them, you're just like to totally interrupting them, just condescending. And they have, you can't tell people what they haven't asked for. Like you can tell people what they already know, what they already know they want to know. And like at least be courteous enough to, to ask them if they've got two minutes spare to talk to you. And, uh, <clears throat> I, th I love it because social media, obviously, you can log into your inbox and you, you're there to check your messages. You don't mind reading the messages there. You can click on the name and ask for more information if you want or not respond. So you give them all the cur courtesies and control. And if you're compelling enough, then you can make it work. Now I know what you're thinking. Uh, you, you're thinking to yourself, yeah, but I get lots of these LinkedIn messages and I would never respond to any of them because they're so crap. Well, guess what? I get them as well. So I thought like I'd log into my account and like I did this um, th this morning and just like print off a couple of, of um, screenshots and we'll just go through them together because uh, then you'll understand the differences between the ones that work and the ones that don't. So <clears throat> greetings for the day. We are a leading IT company with 250 engineers providing our services and solutions to clients globally. We are focused. It's all about them. Do not write a message that's all about you. No one gives a shit. Only people only care about themselves. Like you don't want to assume a need. How the hell do you know that I'm interested in a mobile app for my business. How do you know that I haven't already got one? How do you know that I'm not even like going bankrupt and not, you know, this last thing on my mind It's so condescending. You're assuming a need. Don't do this. <clears throat> what you should do is say, hey, um, Nathaniel, I've looked at your profile. Uh, I'm interested in finding out more about your business to see if uh, you could benefit from having a mobile app, are you free for me to ask you a couple of questions uh, sometime over the next few days at a time that suits you? Let me know. Love to speak to you soon. Cheers. Done. You haven't told them anything about what you do. You've just shown interest. You want to ask some questions to see if they're if you have the problem that they solve. Massive, massive difference. Same thing. Same thing. I mean, they're all very similar, right? They are boring. Yeah, I mean, this is true. Don't be boring. I mean, this is one of the this is one of the most um, under uh, under spoke about uh, things in marketing. But like to me, it's a no brainer. No one ever put it in the book. Like it should be at the front uh, bloody chapter of these marketing books should be 
don't be boring i mean really like jesus i can't believe how boring those two messages were <laughs> okay guys uh add value you know i'm big on this if you can provide value to people that want to hear from you you will kill the game social media is just basically making it easier to work out who's not adding value and who is now i love sales which is interesting because i i, I hear a lot of stuff in the marketplace about people who don't like salespeople. Oh, I like I love salespeople. What are they on about? But then I thought about it a bit more, and I was like, Nah. Do you know what? I actually don't like being sold to. So isn't that interesting? I like sales, but I don't like being sold to. So what's the distinction between somebody who likes selling but doesn't like being sold to? In fact, I actually like it when people uh, add value to my life, but I don't like being sold to. And I'm like, and I'm like well, I when I sell. I add value. That's why I love it. I love adding value to people. And so isn't it interesting that I experience um, the phrase be sold to as somebody trying to manipulate me into buying something I don't want. Um, whereas if it's like helping me make a more informed purchasing decision or, you know, adding value so that I can actually make a, a better decision or make an easier decision or give you the resources or let me try it or whatever it is, um, then that's cool. Like it's really helpful and I appreciate that. And so think of sales like adding value because if you think about it like that, you'll actually be a lot more successful. The most of the people that hate salespeople are probably pretty crap salespeople because they're not thinking about adding value. Sorry if that upset anyone, by the way, but it's true. <laughs> Show me the return on investment, says Tom Cruise. And the return on investment is how you should be measuring social media. Likes, comments, all that sort of stuff that digital agencies will feed us from time to time are just designed um, to keep you living in fear, keep you on as a client and not get any results. Think about how you can help people make value for others. Yeah, Alibaba, I'm a big fan of this company. Look, guys, if you don't know how to add value to your clients, pick up the telephone, please, and say, hey, can I ask you a couple of questions? I wanna learn about how I can add more value to you and the rest of my clients. Uh, what would it be that would add more value to your life? And it may not be anything to do with, you know, service your offer, you could be a dentist, and they'll say, hey, it'd be great if we had some muffins when we left. Done, bang, you just added value. Your customer retention rate uh, will go up. <laughs> it will, it's, this sort of thing will, does work, you know, and you just measure the results. And if you don't believe that they're working, then you can look at the numbers and you, and you can work out that you're wrong. It's okay to be wrong because you'll make more money. Uh, meet Craig, a, a client of ours who uh, knew that his uh, target market was on LinkedIn and just didn't know how to reach and engage them. Uh, you know, 15 meetings a month is what he was after. And, you know, 1,500 followers, so I like guess a lot more than that. He's a published author, obviously, um, you know, getting ex exactly the amount of uh, clients that he wants. And, uh, you know, I think that that's really the strategy because what he's done is he's leveraged his referral network, you know, like it gives you visibility over uh, who your clients know, you know, like when I was selling real estate, go back to that story. Um, I used to say to new clients, I say, hey, uh, thanks for doing business with me. Can you think of two or three other people that would also like to buy a property in Phuket and write down their name and phone number and I'll call them up and I'd really appreciate the, the introduction and, you know, do a referral that way. It worked really well. Uh, however, these days I can look at a client's LinkedIn profile and I can look at the people they're connected with and I can say, hey, uh, I've looked through all your connections and I've picked out these three or four people here. Uh, they would be really ideal for me because they're in this industry and, da -da 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 -da, and they're exactly the people I want. So rather than just like waiting for the client to come up with two or three people in his mind, I've actually picked out of his whole network what which um, referrals would be absolutely perfect for me. So that's why I love what Craig's doing because it's like he's just really just amplified the power of his network. Ashwin, uh, just to show you, like this guy's a financial advisor. He was one of the BT companies, SF. FFS Wealth, I believe it was. Within 30 days of commencing his campaign, he had 23 qualified leads. Uh, that's great. You know, those lawyers like surgeons and uh, medical practitioners, so really happy for Ashwin. Uh, Maureen, she lives in Singapore. She sells real estate developments in Australia. Uh, she said to me once, hey, it's a shame that LinkedIn marketing doesn't work for uh, you know, like B2C because like real estate, I guess, is B2C, even though it's investors. Look, uh, we decided to, to target CEOs, um, who obviously high income earners, CEOs that are based in Singapore that went to university in Australia. Therefore, they'd be more interested in Aussie properties because obviously, you know, selling residential Australian investments to people in Singapore uh, is a unique thing. And, uh, you know, invited people to a seminar. Uh, LinkedIn is really effective for filling event spaces if you can add value. And uh, this is a text I received after a few days. She doubled her network and had 20, uh, sorry, 10 qualified leads. She uses this to this day um, to market properties in Singapore. Uh, very effective. She does it internally now. And uh, we're very happy for her as well. <clears throat> Most people want to be helped. I guess that's another way of adding value. So just you know, think about how you do it, how to do that more effectively. 
having heaps of content is <laughs> something that I hear a lot of. I guess like people are like, I've got, you know, tons and tons of articles. It's not the answer, guys. Um, aligning your marketing with your customer journey and understanding what that is is the answer. And uh, you know, you can only do that by measuring what works. And uh, I've seen so many people measure return on investment before they get a return on investment. This means so foreign because like. The sales cycle is not going to be the same with social media as it is it's than like say AdWords or anything else. And like you have to just eliminate all assumptions and start testing and measuring things, dollar values, because you can you can have an experience where you try Facebook marketing three, four, five, six, seven times. You could use twelve different companies and you could have it not work every single time. And it could literally be one stupid thing like you only tried it for a month. And you need to try it for two because the sales cycle longer. Or, um, you know, if you don't like uh, a lot, uh, isolate things that you can measure and improve upon, then you'll never be able to work out why it didn't work for you. But all of, like, you know, there's this fraction of the companies in your industry for some reason seem to smash it. Okay, let's talk about the profile optimization of a LinkedIn account. Uh, this is an example of what can be achieved. Uh, within the space of a week, Lily Monroe's profile went from having no views uh, to the last day getting 91 profile views within a day. There's 232 profile views for the week. And now it's consistently like about, you know, way above that. And you can imagine the power if you amplify uh, this uh, effect across multiple employees of a brand. It's way more than you can achieve through optimizing a website. Funnily enough, when you get to these bigger numbers and also uh, for even for us to generate like 91 views, which is the number that she got on the most on the final day of the week uh, through Google advertising. Every time somebody clicks, we're going to be paying about five bucks for that click. So how much is that going to cost us? Well, you do the math, about 500 bucks. Obviously, we just got it for free. So and that's just one employee. And um, uh, this is what uh, we did to achieve that. Well, a fraction of what we did. There's an 18 step process. These are four of the steps, the most powerful for search engine optimization. You might want to grab a pen and paper right now so you can write this down. Okay, number one, custom URL. For those of you that aren't aware what a URL is, it's a web address. So www.linkedin.com forward slash IN, then forward slash uh, your first and last name. I'll get you to put in there. So uh, when you go to your public profile and customize your public profile area, if you can find your customized uh, public profile area, then it will have an option where you can customize your unique uh, URL or, they, or vanity URL, they call it. And rather than having like a bunch of numbers and just gibberish, uh, after linkedin.com and forward slash in forward slash, uh, you can customize it. And what I'd encourage you to do is use your first and last name because people are searching on Google for your first and last name, but when they want to do business with you, but at what stage of the buying cycle, it's actually further towards the end of the buying cycle when they already know who you are and they're making a decision as to whether to meet with you or do business with you. Um, a lot of people are using Google to do background checks on people. And the, the worst thing you can have, somebody's like meeting you because they're looking about employing your services or buying a product off you. Uh, you don't want them reading your CV. It's one of the most boring pieces of marketing material that you could possibly hand a prospect. Okay, so you want to engage them like they do on your website, explain the value, talk about the problem, uh, talk about the services you offer, the type of clients that you help, and give them a call to action as to what to, to do next. And hey, what you could add value as well. Why don't you give them a free gift, free download, free resource, free video, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, encourage them to connect, tell them the next step, make them feel welcome, and, and the process easy and straightforward to do business with you. The headline, um, if you put keywords in the headline, which is the bit next to your name, they will have a tremendous impact on the search engine optimization value. So a lot of people will make the mistake of say having a uh, business development manager or CEO or account director or whatever it may be is their headline, which is their headline, I get it, it's a job title, but uh, there's no phrases in there that a customer might search for. Uh, so like if you're an accountant, or let's, let's use a digital marketing example uh, agency since it's so close to home. Now look, if somebody wrote, okay, I'm a managing director of BB Consulting, right? Uh, how many people are gonna be looking for that? Well, it could be like people looking for a job, they're looking for directors of, you know, of BB Consulting, uh, or it could be people like who are looking to recruit for a job. So I could get all these sales letters and like, um, from people looking for jobs, people looking to recruit for jobs. I could even get sales letters from people looking to sell to me. Of course, people are gonna to wanna to sell to the directors, right? Now, what am I not going to get if people who are looking for a marketing agency? So why don't I just like do away with the whole director BB consulting stuff and put in digital marketing strategist, social media expert, LinkedIn trainer, and things like that my customers might actually search for, and then maybe I'll get some different results. 
And then I want to do the same thing with my experience header. If you do the headline and then the experience headers, uh, then if you use the same keywords in each of those places, then you will have uh, a pretty big impact, especially in the LinkedIn search results. Like when people search in the LinkedIn first search results, you're likely to be at the top if you just do those two things. Uh, because you always see your first degree connections first um, and then second degree connections and then you have limited visibility based on your account after that, adding connections always going to be a way to increase your visibility. Great quote by Tony Robbins. If you add the value, you will become the brand. Find a way to add more value than anyone else does. That's the game, guys. That's all for you. Uh, there will be a link to register for the upcoming event in Melbourne. I really encourage you all to come. I wish you nothing but the best in your business and hope to assist you further on your path to success uh, in the new future. Have a great day.